everybody and thank you for joining us on today's webinar. Um, just before I introduce Maggie and Wendy, I want to go through a few things. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Lauren Oakley. I'm the events coordinator at Staffordshire Chambers of Commerce. If you haven't used Zoom before, please do not worry. We cannot hear or see you. So if you're eating your breakfast, having a drink, then you can only hear it and see us. So please don't worry about that. Um, for those of you who haven't used Zoom, there's two functions you need to be aware of. And um, these can be found at either the top or bottom of your screen. This is the Q&A function and the chat function. Um, if you can hear and see me, if you could just put hi in the chat box, then that would be great. Thank you. Lovely. Hi, Louise. Hi, James. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Mark. Hi, Helen. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, Marie. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Carl. Oh, brilliant. It looks like everybody can see and hear us, which is great. As mentioned, there's also another function, which is the Q&A function. Um, after Maggie and Wendy have done their session, you will be able to ask them questions live. We do ask that you wait until um, the end of the session for these questions. But if you do have any questions, in the meantime, pop them in the Q&A box and these can be answered at the end. So I'm delighted now to introduce Wendy Hall and Maggie Neal. Whenever you're ready, thank you. Thank you, Laura. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Staffordshire Chambers of Commerce webinar on the new UK Global Import Tariff which comes into operation on the 1st of January 2021. We'll see as we go through the slides that the new tariff will replace the EU's common external tariff, which applies until the end of the year. It shows the tariffs that will be applied to goods at the border when they're imported into the UK. There are, of course, exceptions, but we'll go through these as well later. So thank you for joining Wendy and myself on what will be very much an introduction to the subject. Unfortunately, we don't have time on this webinar to cover every aspect, but it's an important consideration for all importers. So please do contact us if you need clarification or join us on one of our practical courses here at the Chamber. Thank you, Lauren. Can we have the next slide, please? Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. So in this brief session, we shall be covering a range of issues. We'll kick off with some background on the UK Global Tariff in the consultation period. And then we'll move on to the UK Global Tariff in more detail, looking at the changes it will bring and how it compares with the current EU's common external tariff. After that, we'll demonstrate by showing you a couple of examples of products and their tariff numbers, which will illustrate the change or none, as the case may be. We'll then move on to what the implications are for business. We'll talk about the business opportunities and the benefits, the sector impact and what that means for you. Finally, you'll have heard about the new government announcement on the 12th of June with regard to the new border control processes, which will be implemented and the three stage approach, which will start on the 1st of January, 2021. We thought it important to provide some information on that. We'll cover what businesses should be doing to prepare for the changes ahead. Do you need to upskill your staff, for example, and what support there is available for companies to do that? So can we have the next slide, please, Lauren? Thank you. The government announced the UK's new most favoured nation or MFN tariff regime uh, following some consultation. Um, and the regime is called the UK Global Tariff and it was introduced on the 19th of May. And this will replace the EU's common external tariff on the 1st of January 2021, and this will be at the end of the transition period. The new tariff aims to cater for the needs of the UK economy, supporting it by making it easier and less costly for businesses to import goods from anywhere overseas. It's simpler and easier to calculate the percentage of import duty, it also removes seasonal tariffs, for instance, on some food items. And where the duty was previously calculated in euro, it will be calculated in pounds sterling. The government is streamlining and simplifying nearly 6,000 tariff lines and lowering costs for businesses by reducing some of the administrative burdens. 
So basically it aims to scrap the red tape and other unnecessary barriers to trade, as well as reducing the costs. Thanks, Lauren. Can I have the next slide, please? So tariff considerations uh, between the UK and EU trade. So during the transition period, there are no tariffs on goods purchased from the European Union, as you know. So tariffs will apply to imports from the EU unless there is a trade deal agreed with zero tariffs. Then basically it remains the same way as we are now. So as we've said, zero tariffs, duty suspensions and tariff quotas will still apply. All of this, however, will be subject to the terms of the agreement, and that includes rules of origin. Rules of origin are complicated, so we're not going to go through that today, but happy to talk through separately if anyone needs to. So I'm sure you are already aware, pretty straightforward, if no trade deal is agreed, then the UK will revert to WTO rules and the UK global tariff will apply. We'll be talking about duty suspensions and tariff quotas a little later to explain what they are. So can we now move on to the next slide, please? Okay, let's look at how uh, the tariff considerations will affect um, UK trade and the rest of the world. So currently for goods purchased and imported from outside of the EU, import tariffs, also referred to as duties, will apply unless the, U the EU has a trade deal with the exporting country, or if there are duty suspensions or tariff quotas in place, or if the country we're importing from is a GSP country, which is General Systems of Preference, and, and these basically are developing countries. We'll take a look at GSP in a bit more detail later, but uh, currently tariffs are applied immediately, goods go through the import customs clearance process. Uh, next slide, please. So what the new UK global tariff um, doesn't cover, so basically what doesn't change, so excluded from UK global import tariff is VAT. This always has to be paid, but the government is bringing in a postponed VAT scheme. Basically, postponed accounting will be introduced for imports from the EU and the rest of the world. It's a VAT deferral scheme, so no cash VAT payments have to be made on arrival in the UK. But it's only available to VAT registered businesses. You have to provide your VAT number to whoever is doing your customs declarations. So that would be your freight forwarder or your customs broker. This will be customs entered and will show on your online month statement that VAT has been postponed. This is your evidence to be able to recover import VAT on your, on your VAT return. When the global tariff, what the global tariff doesn't also cover are these protectionist measures or trade remedies as otherwise known. It's the most used term for anti-dumping, countervailing duties and safeguards. So just to explain a little bit more about those measures, Anti-dumping is a protectionist tariff that a domestic government imposes on foreign imports that it believes are priced below fair market value. Countervailing duties, also known as anti-subsidy duties, are trade import duties imposed under WTO rules. They are imposed after an investigation finds that a foreign country subsidises its exports by harming domestic producers in the importing country. Safeguard, uh, a WTO member may restrict imports of a product temporarily, so take safeguard actions if the domestic industry is harmed or threatened, caused by a surge of imports. Okay, so we can move on to the next slide, please, and where Maggie will explain about duty suspensions and tariff quotas. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you. The EU temporary duty suspensions and tariff quotas regime um, allows duty-free import into the EU of raw materials or components and sometimes semi-finished products, which cannot be supplied or supplied in sufficient quantities from EU or Turkish manufacturers and are used in a process to make another product. So basically that's, uh, that's how that works. Uh, suspensions allow unlimited quantities to be imported in the EU, whereas quotas allow limited quantities to be imported. However, this can't be used simply to import goods for resale. It has to go into a manufacturing process. So from the 1st of January 2021, the UK won't be participating in the EU's 2021 suspension round. So these will not apply. Next slide, please. So, as already discussed, the UK and EU system allows the importation of limited amounts of specific goods, sometimes from specific countries at a lower rate of duty. 
The amount which may be imported can be expressed in units of quantity, value, volume, weight, length, and the period during which the tariff quota is available can be limited. Though all tariff quotas allow a preferential rate of duty, they may or may not form part of the, e the UK or EU preferential trade agreements or arrangements with third countries. Most tariff quotas operate on a first come, first served basis in which you or your agent or freight forwarder must make a claim to the quota on the customs declaration covering the release of goods to free circulation. Other tariff quotas are license based, so you need to apply for an import license before importing the goods. So, as a business, if there is a tariff rate quota on your product, you can apply to import a limited amount at a reduced rate of customs duty. And as mentioned, this is usually on a first come, first serve basis and it primarily applies to agricultural and fish products. The UK government has indicated that it will publish further advice on tariff rate quotas later in 2020. So could we have the next slide, please, Lauren? So let's take a look at the overall changes and we'll go through these in more detail. <coughs> the changes will affect 11,828 tariff lines. A fair few changes there. 33.5% of products will see no change at all. Now this is to protect certain industries. 16.8% uh, tariff lines will become tariff free to support UK manufacturers and consumers. 40.2% of tariffs will be rounded down or banded, in other words, simplified. 9.4% will be expressed in pounds rather than euros. That tends to apply to food products or commodities. And uh, 0.1% will be reduced. Zero VAT and tariffs uh, will be applicable on COVID related products, that will continue. But um, all of this is undergoing review throughout 2020 and will continue to apply during 2021. And next slide, please. <clears throat> so one of the most important things you need to make sure is to, you have the correct tariff number. Um, so we know there'll be changes to the tariff, but how do you make sure you have the correct tariff number? You need to make sure it's correct. So ultimately you're paying the correct import duty in VAT. Having the correct tariff number also ensures you have the correct paperwork or licenses in place before you import. So all very important. Well, there are two ways you can go about this. You can ask someone to help you navigate through the trade tariff website, such as the Chamber of Commerce, or you could contact HMRC providing a description of your goods and they will be able to advise. However, if you've got a vast product range, then this will take a long time and HMRC won't be able to help you for each one. So it's recommended you classify yourself so you understand the procedure. So searching for the code yourself to conduct a search, you need to access the link here on the slide. You, you may find it helpful to read the product classification guides to help you on your way. The link is also provided here for your reference. Firstly, you need to search for goods, for your goods. So you need to have the following information available what your product is. Some products will be easy enough to find just based on what they are, for example, mattresses. If you can't find your product's code based off what your product is, here are a few things you should take note of to help you classify your goods. What are they made from? How they work? How they're packaged? What is the size, weight, dimensions if applicable? What will it be used for or used in? The more technical the product, the trickier it will be to classify. It can be long, a long process, but this is unfortunately what you have to do. When you finally click through to the tariff code, there should be an overview for you to see the duty percentage. For products where you're finding difficulty in classifying, we recommend you ask HMRC classification service for advice. You'll need to provide detailed information about your product that will help them classify the product with accuracy. Contact details are provided in the guidance. The other link here, the check future tariffs, is for you to find what, how, what duties will be applicable to your particular tariff number. So we're just going to show you now a couple of examples. So can we move to the next slide, please, Lauren? OK, we can see here that we put in the search bar, we put the link in there and it, it's come up with a, a find or a search page. Now, um, you can uh, scroll all the way through and have a look at every single heading. I wouldn't recommend it because there are 99 different headings. So it's, it's a hell of a long way to go through. What we've done here, um, we've just scrolled down to find something that's you know, easy to understand by everybody. But in the search box there, you could just as easily have, have typed in ballpoint pens or whatever your product is to search for it or put a commodity code in if you know that anyway. So basically what this is showing you here is that if you were going to import ballpoint pens 
liquid ink, um, currently the import duty would be 3.7%. However, as you can see at the side there, the change has been simplified to round it down to 2%. So you haven't got the fiddly uh, point percentages um, in, in the, um, the tariff calculation there. So that's basically an example of a simplified tariff um, change for the new global tariff. And we'll have the next slide, please. So on this one, uh, we just wanted to show you an example of one of the protected industries. So here's an example of one of, our, of, one of those. Um, so ceramics, um, very important to the, the local industry. So tariff there is currently 12% and it actually stays at 12% under the new UK global tariff. The British Ceramics Confederation has played an important role in ensuring that the industry is protected. If you click on the C link there, it will take you to trade remedies remedies transition policy which Maggie will explain a little bit more about in the next slide thank you okay so we can see that nothing's okay. changed there and that's beneficial for the uh, UK ceramics industry for that particular product because it means that um, the, the duty remains the same so it, it keeps the, the the price then protects the local industry now there was a link there um, looking at trade remedies <coughs> and you can see see there that trade remedies protect domestic industries from unfair practices around imports. So the, that notice there, you'll see if you go onto the tariff and you click any of those C details under the new tariff, it will take you to a, a customs page, which will tell you exactly what those um, instructions are. And that particular one is the trade re remedies transition policy. Next slide, please. There's some more changes and uh, they call these liberalised items. So significant changes with tariffs were removed on nearly 2,000 goods. So basically tariffs are being removed and reduced for goods which are considered as key inputs to the UK manufacturing. So this includes wood, machinery input and plastics and in areas where the UK doesn't have a significant domestic industry to protect. So things like cotton, bicycle parts and footwear. Tariffs have also been removed to support UK green industries and to help the UK meet, meet net zero emission obligations. This includes zero tariffs on turbine parts, waste containers and trees. The low tariffs below 2.5% have been removed. These are known as nuisance tariffs, as Maggie's mentioned, reducing administrative burdens on UK businesses. These can cost governments more to collect than the revenue generated. Examples include spices from 12.5% to zero, screws and bolts from 3.7% to zero, cotton fabric from 8% to zero. So Maggie will now go through some of the other tariff line changes. So if we can have the next slide, please, Lauren. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the type of product and what the changes will be. So those which will see no change, so those 5,000 tariff lines will remain the same as the EU common external tariff. Examples of these include cars and agricultural products, ceramics, as we've just seen. And this, as we've said, is to protect the home industry and um, the UK manufacturers from cheaper imports. It also continues to provide uh, preferential access to the UK market for developing countries. So um, no tariffs will remain, tariffs will remain zero for these particular markets. Um, those that are simplified, we've got 4,747 tariff lines simplified, moving to a single percentage, so reduced or rounded down, as we saw with the other example. These goods include agricultural products uh, to avoid seasonal variations, some meat and fish products. So, for instance, currently natural honey attracts a 17.3% duty. It's now been rounded down to 16%. So there are benefits there with the rounding down. Tariffs which uh, have been reduced, 12 tariff lines have been reduced. For example, motor vehicle, make vehicles for moving goods, the tariff is reduced from 22% to 10%. And some commodity products previously charged in euros are now charged in sterling. Rice, for instance, was previously 42.4 euros a tonne. It's now £25 per tonne. So those are some of the, the, the basic changes there. Also, some of the EU current EU measures have been removed. For instance, the Mersing Code, which is based on the amount of starch or glucose, sugar, milk, fat, etc., 
contained in a product will no longer be applicable. An example of the kind of product that would be affected by that currently is something like biscuits or chocolate or any, any sweet products. And the entry price system, which is based upon the market price of the goods. So if the entry price is lower, the tariff would be higher to balance it out and bring it in line with home market products and prices. So those measures have been removed because they are uh, complicated and the tariff, the new tariff aims to simplify procedures for UK importers. And next slide, please. So just to recap here, we've got the, the summary of changes um, in percentage terms. So no change to the current tariff, 33.5%. Liberalised, that means just uh, reduced to zero, 16.8%. The simplified, the rounded down, the, those nuisance tariffs, they've been 40.2%. And the currency conversion, Maggie highlighted earlier, the, it's going to be uh, changed to pounds as it was previously in, in euro. So that's all good. Reduced tariffs, um, just at 0.1% with only 12 lines reduced, as Maggie's just said. So items such as white, brown rice, road tractors, motor vehicles for the transport of goods and then we have the lower average tariff rates across the four main sectors there uh, covering agriculture, fish, processed agricultural products and industrial goods. So the um, and then the commitment to meeting environment of environmental targets around a hundred environmentally friendly products are to become tariff free. Um, in an attempt to help the UK meet its net zero commitment by 2050. I think I mentioned that earlier on. So just thought I'd highlight that the government is also backing UK industry by maintaining tariffs on agricultural products such as lamb, beef and poultry, maintaining a 10% tariff on cars, maintaining tariffs for the vast majority of ceramic products, removing tariffs on £30 billion worth of imports entering UK supply chains. 0% tariff on products used in UK production, including copper alloy tubes, they're down from 5.2%, and screws and bolts, which are down from 3.7%. They also want to maintain preferential agreements, uh, pre sorry, they also want to maintain preferential treatment for developing nations known as GSP. So Maggie's going to explain about GSP in the next slide. Thanks, Lauren. Supporting developing countries, or what we call GSP countries, is fundamental to international trade. Some of these developing countries are Commonwealth countries and could be key trading partners for the UK in the future. So what happens there is we, we assist their, their pr production lines and products by um, reducing tariffs and, or maybe even reducing to zero. So along with supporting these countries, the UK will also um, have simplified procedures for those goods which are subject to seasonal change and that, that will remain a constant tariff they won't be um, won't change with the seasonal um, supply and of course different considerations apply to different products and countries not necessarily the developing ones but these may be subject to change depending on future trade agreements we also need to consider free ports which the UK plans to expand so just to clarify, businesses operating inside the port, the free port, can manufacture goods using imported components and add value to the product before exporting again without ever facing the full tariffs or import procedures. However, if the goods move out of the free port into another part of the country, they have to go through the full import process, including paying tariffs. Next slide, please. So your supply chain for UK and overseas sales. So we've covered all the changes which will come in, into operation on the 1st of January. So what does it mean for your business and how will it affect your sales in the UK and overseas? So if we look at food ingredients, for example, and food manufacture, the reduction or removal of tariffs for some food ingredients and manufacturing is welcomed as it benefits UK producers and consumers as it will reduce raw material costs for consumers and the food industry as a whole. Then we've got environment, as I've mentioned earlier, around 100 environmentally friendly products are to become tariff free. And that's uh, for the government's attempt to meet the UK, uh, meeting its net zero commitment by 2050. And this is also matched in most countries globally. So this will provide opportunities for exporters committed to developing environmental and sustainable goods and services. 
Simplification, as discussed, the new tariff is expected to make it easier and cheaper for businesses to import goods from overseas, and it will assist traders in business planning. The UK global tariff also offers a lower tariff regime than the EU's common external tariff, and it will be in pounds rather than euros, so much quicker and quicker to calculate. And much easier, of course. The new approach to the tariff schedule streamlines and simplifies nearly 6,000 tariff lines and lowers costs for businesses by reducing administrative burdens. The changes include scrapping unnecessary tariff variations, rounding tariffs down to standardised percentages, and getting rid of all those nuisance tariffs we've talked about. So we'll just talk a little bit on the liberalising tariffs, as in removing tariffs, which we talked about earlier. The removal of the tariffs on goods classed as inputs to production could improve competitiveness and productivity by reducing costs for UK manufacturers, particularly for firms who are engaged in cross-border supply chains. So for goods such as wood, machinery input and plastics, and in areas where the UK doesn't have a significant domestic industry to protect, this will have the potential to improve the competitiveness of industries both domestically and internationally. By contrast, British producers will still be protected as tariffs are being retained across 5,000 products. And as Maggie mentioned, where the UK has defensive interests. The agriculture, biofuel, automotive and ceramics are all examples in the government's policy document. Preferential treatment for developing nations, as we've talked about, the government has reaffirmed its commitment to allowing mostly tariff-free access to less economically developed countries under the GSP scheme. Some of these developing countries are Commonwealth countries and key future trading partners of the UK, for example, the African market. Under the UK global tariff, around 70% of UK imports from WTO countries will be duty-free. This compares with around 52% currently. The University of Sussex has calculated that around 44% of imports from the EU will be tariff free. However, these new tariffs will apply only if the UK doesn't have preferential agreements in place by the end of the year. The government has been pursuing a continuity programme to roll over existing EU third country agreements. They are also discussing future trade agreements with key partners like the US, Japan, Australia and New Zealand. Until we hear more on these preferential agreements being placed before the end of the year, importers are advised to plan under the UK Global Tariff, i.e. WTO rules. Can we have the next slide, please? Yeah, announcements were made in June stating that from the 1st of January, there will be checks on controlled substances, for example, alcohol, tobacco. Standard goods will be subject to basic customs procedures, but importers will have up to six months to complete the customs declaration and pay duties. So that's a simplified procedure that, and an easement that the government has brought in. From 1st of April, those importing products of animal origin, meat, milk or egg products, that kind of thing, will have to pre-notify and provide the relevant health documentation. And by July the 1st, the relevant tariffs and customs declarations uh, as well as full safety and security declarations will need to be made. So from July, there will be an increase in physical checks of livestock, plants and other sanitary, phytosanitary products at the ports and at the, any other ports of entry. So the government has brought these in to help uh, during the transition from um, the 1st of January next year. And uh, that, that aims to help importers with the, uh, the burden of customs duties, which they may have to um, incur. So next slide, please. So just to follow on from the last slide. Um, so the introduction of full controls will take place from the 1st of January 21. Duty and VAT payments for imports can be deferred for up to six months, which will help get goods cleared through customs much quickly and will help with cash flow. Safety and security on imports will be waived for the first six months. Full customs control starting from the 1st of July, so duty and VAT payments will be due immediately on arrival from that date. Exception is for control goods that will have full controls from the 1st of January, so that kicks off straight away. Um, new arrangements only apply to imports from the EU, so it doesn't um, apply to rest of the world imports, because that will be the same as it is anyway. So. There will be a stage introduction for standard goods and postponed VAT accounting, which will also apply to control goods and those that don't want to delay the submission of full declarations. Those that delay will have six months to do so and can delay payments. 
HMRC aimed to eliminate any immediate need for traders to apply any new processes immediately, so after the end of the transition period. And this is not a return to TSP, there's no need to register, but traders will need to get their freight forwarder or customs broker to submit their customs declarations later using their company's records. If you'd like further guidance on this, please contact us directly. We aim to host more events on the subject in the autumn to give businesses time to prepare, subject to COVID guidance, of course, or we'll do them via webinars. And details of these will be posted on our website. Um, and can we have the next slide, please, Lauren? Let's have a look at what companies should be considering. The first thing a company should be looking at is establishing the correct tariff number. We, we've said a little bit about that earlier and correct tariffs for the imported products, because this could affect the whole business model and supply chain. The UK businesses in conjunction with their overseas suppliers should consider the implications of individual tariff lines in relation to the supply chain costs and supply chain simplicity. Now this could be easier or it could be not so easy, um, but it's worth evaluating early on. The impact on margins and profitability and these could be positive or negative as well. There's also an impact on sales and sales potential. That could be in the UK, the EU and the rest of the world. And it could be existing sales or potential sales. And competitor activity. You'll be sure that your competitors will be evaluating these issues too. Also, the use of special customs procedures. Um, to make the supply chain more efficient and also to use specific liberalised tariffs or tariff-free items. Also, a good understanding of the government easements that we touched upon earlier. So it's a good idea to start looking at these impacts sooner rather than later. And if you need any help or guidance on that, Wendy has already said that we're providing more training courses, potentially webinars, uh, or you can just give us a ring or ask us some questions and we'll be happy to help you there. And next slide, please. So we've uh, finished the presentation really, but just want to highlight if you require further help or advice on this topic or anything else international trade related, then we do offer a range of training courses here at Staffordshire Chambers and they're all listed here on the slide. We can do bespoke also, obviously not at the moment, um, we're under current COVID guidelines, but we aim to, hopefully, if we get back to normal, we will be able to. So if you can visit our website for further details, the links are there. Um, also, one thing to point out that there is um, there are grants available um, to support training costs. So HMRC provide grants for anything uh, with regard to getting ready for customs um, preparations. And, um, so, and then also some of the other courses that we do there or we do have the, the Staffordshire Skills Hub and there are grants available as well to support some of that training that you might need uh, to get ready for next year. So um, thank you very much. I hope you found that of value. And um, if you've got any questions, uh, I think Lauren's going to uh, coordinate that. Thank you. Thanks both Wendy and Maggie. That was um, really, really interesting. Um, webinar. As Wendy's just uh, mentioned, we are taking um, questions live now. So if you've got any questions for either Maggie or Wendy, please pop these in the Q&A um, function at the top or bottom of your screen. Thank you. I think we've already had some through, guys. So um, Alison says, will we need to change our commodity codes for import and export? Well, as we were, no. Oh, sorry, Maggie, do you want me to get this one? If, um, if you wish, if you wish, no problem. Yeah, no, I don't. Um, you just need to check and make sure that um, nothing's changed. But as far as I'm aware, the commodity codes haven't changed. Um, so you can still use the same ones, but obviously best to check that they are correct. Um, that, but that, that's true. It's what, as Wendy says, it's best to check it, the, your commodity code and make sure it's the right one for your product. There shouldn't be any changes. The only changes that there should be is in the amount of duty or tariff that's applied to that particular num uh, tariff number. So, yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Um, somebody says, will you be holding a similar webinar relating to export? Um, 
Yes, possibly. We can always arrange something, yes. Um, we're not sure of what the government are putting in place for easements for exporters. I know these are all for importers. So on the export side, I think we're, we've been asked, we've, the government have been asked the question, will, will there be any easements? Um, so when we find if there's anything, I think they're working on that now. As soon as we know anything, then I'm sure we'll be able to sort something out for another webinar. Lovely, thank you. Um, another question, I import PP material for printing on. How does this affect me? Is, it, is this PP material? Yes. PP uh, material. PPE. Well, at the moment, um, there uh, is no tariff and um, no VAT on imported PPE. And, and we, we don't see that changing at the moment during the, uh, the COVID situation. Great, thank you. Um, Kathy says, am I correct in understanding that these UK global tariffs will only apply if the UK does not reach a trade deal with the EU? Yes, that's correct. Correct. Yeah. Lovely, thank you. Gary um, has asked a question. After the defer VAT six months to blow, delay in payments, will it then be deducted monthly or quarterly? That's a very good question. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if you know, Wendy, but I'm assuming it will be on your normal tax return. I think it will be on a normal tax return, yeah, on a monthly basis. But we can check that out, Gary. Um, I'll, I will double check on that. Lovely, thank you. Um, we've just had one in the chat box. Um, Richard says, hi all, great webinar. Can you send me a copy of the PowerPoint, please? I believe Wendy and Maggie, this will be going out to all attendees. Is that correct? It will. Yes, it will go out to all the attendees, yeah. Lovely, thank you. Karen says, is TSP still going to be offered? Hi Karen, um, no, um, I think, I know companies registered for this um, 12 months ago, um, no, it, it's not, um, I think companies were advised to keep hold of the paperwork, but um, no, I don't think that's going to be um, in operation, so no, it's just going to be, and if you want, obviously if you've got any queries about any of this, um, you know, the nitty gritty stuff, um, then please give myself or Maggie a call we can go through it with you but no TSP won't be relevant it's been withdrawn we've got just a minute or so if anybody does have any more questions for Wendy and Maggie if you could pop them in the Q&A or if you find it easier to pop them in the chat please do so thank you I think you've answered everybody's questions both I did, I did see one from I did see one from Finder from Jackie Reeves, Laura. I did see that one when it popped up, but I think um they deleted the um question okay. after yes and just received. Right. It. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Any more questions? We do have a minute or so. Uh, we've got another one yet. Yeah, Jackie's just put it back. If you already have the eight digit commodity code from the supplier, do you still need to check each one or do you just need to add in the extra two digits for importing? Currently use the eight digit number on the arrivals declaration each month. It's always a good idea to, to it's always a good idea to check um, your, your tariff matches the goods that you're importing. But um, if your supplier has established that tariff number, then it's probably, I would say, the correct one for your product. Um, so I would, I would stick with the, with the original one. And yes, the, the extra digits can just be added on there. Got another question. Freight forwarding will be an additional charge from the normal EU deliveries. What impact do you expect? Um, Sorry. Could you repeat the question, Lauren? Yeah, um, Sharon said freight forwarding will be an additional charge from the normal EU deliveries. What impact do you expect? 
Well, I would say the the, addition, the freight forwarding will be an additional charge. Well, I'm sure freight forwarders are already charging for their deliveries, whether it's from the EU or from the rest of the world. So I would imagine the additional charge would be for possibly um, the customs declaration charges. Um, and if there's any documentation that freight forwarders do for, for companies, so it, there may be um, customs clearance, handling charges, um, whereas before they um, haven't been applicable for importing um, or exporting to the EU, but those will be additional charges, I would think. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with Wendy. I don't think there'll be um, too much of an addition to the, the actual freight costs. It'll just be these add-on charges that we'll need to, you know, for, for the extra things that need to be done post-transition. Gary has asked, have we got a seminar plan for completing customer declaration for importing goods? Or have you got a list of brokers who will provide this service? Well, we've, um, yes, we, we haven't got a seminar planned yet, Gary, but we can do. Um, I think we probably will plan all of this uh, when we try and get back to some sort of normality, or if not, we'll do it online. But we can do this. We appreciate that companies will want to know more about customs declarations and what the implications are. Um, so, um, what else was it that, that the question's gone off? I just lost the trail of what Gary said as well. And let me just oh, yeah, the list of well, yes, we yeah. funnily enough, Gary, um, we at the Chamber of Commerce do customs, we are a customs broker, we can do those um, customs declarations for you. So, um, if you want to have a chat about that, then I mean, your freight forwarder. Um, can do customs declarations. Well, some of them can. You need to check with your freight forwarder if they can do those declarations from, for EU trade because um, they may be doing them for the rest of the world trade but not be set up or you may only have imported from the EU where you haven't had to have customs declarations done and in that case your freight forwarder might not be set up for that and they may have to appoint a customs broker to do that for them. Um, well, we're one of those customs brokers, so we can um, we can offer that service to to companies. So, if you want more information, give me a shout. Martin has asked, will tariffs from countries outside of the EU with whom we currently trade remain unchanged, and will these tariffs be affected by a no EU deal if the current arrangement is an EU broker deal? Okay, so um, we can, we're can we assuming that the, the tariff, are we talking, with, um, I think we're probably talking about tariffs in terms of duties rather than tariff numbers. Um, the tariffs, the import tariffs will be set by the UK. So if we have trade deals, obviously that will influence the amount of, of duty that's applicable against all these products. So until we finalise these deals, we won't know exactly what the impact will be on imports from um, anywhere in the world, really. If we have a deal with the EU, then um, potentially that will change. Hopefully that will change for the better, um, if we do have a deal. But as far as, as we understand, um, it's based on the current deals that we have with countries around the world. So it, it's subject to change, but the UK global tariff is set now um, for the eventuality of no deal. So I don't know if that, that answers your question there, but uh, hopefully. Thank you. We've just got time for two more. Okay. So Jackie has asked, will you be doing a webinar on trading with Ireland when that becomes clearer? Um, we haven't got that. What, what, what we're doing is we haven't got that in the pipeline, but um, I think what this, this is what the, you know, the beauty of these webinars and getting questions is finding out what companies actually want. So we can certainly look at doing something like that, Jackie. Yeah, we've, we've got some preparing some information on the Northern Ireland Protocol and, and things like that. But at the moment, none of that has been settled, as, as Wendy's just said. But yes, certainly, we're, we're happy to do that. We, we can possibly include that in a, a Brexit webinar. We will be doing um, Brexit webinars again, like we've said. We'll be kicking off with those again in the autumn. Um, so yeah, look out for those on our website. Right, thank you. And that was the last question. Um, Richard asked, would you be doing Brexit um, webinars? And you've just answered that, Wendy, so that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to thank both Wendy and Maggie for delivering today's um, webinar. Um, it was really insightful and really interesting. 
and to see um, what's changed and what hasn't. Um, also, thank you to all attendees that have um, come along to today's webinar. We really do appreciate it, um, given the lovely weather outside. Um, so please do go and enjoy the weather after this webinar. If you would like to listen to this webinar again, or any other webinars delivered by Wendy and Maggie, these can be found on the Chamber website, on the webinar library. But I would just like to thank Wendy, Maggie again, and all the attendees um, who have come along to today's webinar. And we look forward to seeing you on future webinars and also in the Chamber. So thank you, everybody, and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.